Guys, the next discussion is about the diagrams throughout your physics syllabus. Now, a diagram drawn in the paper might look perfect on a bigger picture, but when the paper corrector gets into the details, that's where you keep losing marks. So, here's highlighting the small details about the diagrams in your syllabus. So, starting off with the first chapter, that's chapter 4. Now, in the chapter 4, you barely have one important diagram, that's a scale diagram based on numerical. Now, this is the diagram that you have been seeing in the textbook while solving numericals. But when it comes to your exam, of course, you're not drawing this difficult and complicated diagram. It's going to take a lot of time. So, we have an easier version for you guys. So, all you have to do is just draw a straight line which represents a scale. The next important highlights that you need to know is that do not forget to draw this small triangle. The next thing that you need to take care is that all the markings should be above the scale. And the thing that you need to take care again to save your time is that you need not draw all the markings of the scale as you can see in the textbook one that is from 0, 10, 20 till 100. All you require is just the marking of 0 and 100 centimeters. Now, the next chapter is work, energy and power. Now, again in this chapter, there's not much of drawing in the diagrams. You just have two diagrams, the one which is the free fall of a body. Now, this diagram supports your theory on k plus u is equal to constant and this one's the motion of a simple pendulum. Since you can see not much of drawing, all you need to take care is just the markings on the diagram. Moving on to the last chapter in the mechanics section that is machines. Now the first type of diagram that you come across in the chapters is levers and their types. Now if the question says you just need to represent the basic structure of types of lever then the following diagrams are enough. But if the question demands you to draw an example of lever, let's say for example a nutcracker or a wheelbarrow, then you need to draw the complete diagram and of course not forgetting the position of fulcrum, load and effort. We also have a topic where you have to specify the types of lever in the human body. So in that case also you are drawing the actual picture of that human part and again showing the position of fulcrum, load and effort. Now moving on to the most important and commonly asked questions from machines that is the block and tackle. Now few important tips for drawing the block and tackle diagram. Now the first thing what you draw is the rigid support and do not forget to draw a reference vertical line till the end of the page so that all the pulleys appear in a straight line. Now this line has to be very light and not to be visible while the complete diagram is done. Now next thing what you guys actually forget to do after drawing the pulleys is highlighting the axles of the pulley. This actually enhances the diagram and shows a proper line in which all the pulleys are lying. Now next very very important fact that you guys need to know. When I'm talking about 5 pulley which means I'm talking about odd number of pulleys, one thing that you need to take care of is that the first pulley of the lower block is bigger in diameter as compared to the last pulley of the upper block. Now this thing has to be taken care only to ensure that the strings are not touching each other. And if I come to even number of pulleys, this case gets vice versa. Which means that the first pulley of the lower block is smaller in diameter as compared to the last pulley of the upper block. And coming to the small details, do not forget to show the load acting downwards and again the direction of the effort in the downward direction. Now one more fact I would like to highlight is that each string must have only one arrow showing tension and of course that direction has to be in the upward direction. The next section is the section light which is majorly dominated by diagrams. So the first chapter that's refraction of light at plane surface. Now the first diagram that comes up is refraction from rarer to denser medium. The next that's refraction from denser to rarer medium and the last one is refraction at normal incidence. After drawing the diagram things that needs to be checked is have you marked all the angle of incidences, angle of refraction and angle of deviation. Now one more small fact that does matter is labeling all the rays along with the arrows. 
the next most commonly asked question in the board that's refraction of light through a rectangular glass block obviously we are labeling all the rays but we are also checking if we have not missed any of the three angles that is angle of incidence angle of refraction and angle of emergence obviously all the rays should have their labels along with the direction and one very important fact that do not forget to mark the lateral displacement irrespective it is asked in the question or not coming to the last diagram in part a that's multiple reflection in a thick mirror now in this all you have to take care that the reflected rays come out parallel to each other and again not forgetting the arrows be it a refracted ray or a reflected ray now the next section we begin with deviation of light in a prism now if you come up with a question in the paper which says draw a diagram to show refraction of light in a prism that's the diagram that you're supposed to draw with obviously not forgetting to mark the angle of incidence angle of deviation angle of refraction and angle of emergence and obviously label all the rays and not forgetting the arrows also for the ease of the diagram please draw the refracted ray pq exactly parallel to the base now if you encounter the question which says draw a diagram to show refraction of light of a prism but in the position of minimum deviation now there are few things that need to be changed according to this question now first things first the delta will be replaced by delta min since it is in the position of minimum deviation next important thing that you need to assure with the protractor is that the angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence and obviously by default the ray pq should be parallel to the base and supporting this situation we have the i delta graph now most of kids forget to highlight this and that's obviously the most important thing which is delta min showing the angle of minimum deviation and obviously not forgetting to label y axis and the x axis and with the next section we begin with bending of stick due to refraction now in the diagram one thing what we tend to forget is drawing the arrows on the rays and again do not forget the i in the end now there are questions in the board we have noticed they have asked you to draw an pencil instead of a stick we would suggest you please draw the specified object in the paper moving on to the last part of the chapter which deals with the critical angle and the total internal reflection now here we have three cases when the angle of incidence is less than the critical angle angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle and angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle in all the diagram obviously you are labeling all the rays showing the direction and obviously not forgetting the labels also do not forget to mark all the angles and very importantly show the relationship between i and c below the diagram now coming to one important fact in this diagram as you can see the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are written as i and i it is only for the fact for the first law of reflection that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and throughout this chapter r represents angle of reflection and not angle of throughout this chapter r represents angle of refraction and not angle of reflection now you might come across this diagram in the textbook which says refraction and total internal reflection guys there are many cases when i have seen kids drawing the diagram for the following three cases in the same diagram guys this leads to a very congested diagram so we suggest that in the following three cases you draw three different diagrams and when it comes to diagrams of total internal reflection in the prisms two three important facts that you need to understand firstly i have an example of deviation through 90 degree do not forget to highlight the angle of incidence with the value again draw the exact number of rays as given in the question paper and obviously not forgetting to draw the arrows of the reflected ray and the incident ray 